Okay, so welcome guys. So basically today what you're going to do is uh, we'll go through an email and Excel automation in your iPad. But uh, to kick start, probably I'll just do a quick recap on uh, the session we had uh, on uh, getting started with uh, your iPad Studio so that uh, everyone can be able to get up to par, then you can proceed. So quickly, I'll, I'll ask, uh, I hope uh, guys were able to download uh, your iPad Studio, but if not, I'll just probably do a quick recap on the same. So to do the same, uh, if you have not downloaded, what you need to do is just click uh, cloud, .com. Then uh, you can uh, either sign up uh, with email or continue. So in my case, I've already created an account, so I'll just click continue. Then it will log into your organization or to your default path that you've created. So once you've logged in uh, to the cloud, so there's this place, uh, download your iPad studio. So if you have not downloaded it, what you need to do is just click uh, download your iPad. So probably someone can copy, and just type it in here, yeah, cloud. So once you download, it will create an extension to, uh, to your computer and uh, you'll be able to access it, okay? So that, that's the first bit for guys who have not, that's the process. We'll share these materials so you can also refer. There are also additional links and resources. For example, uh, how you can proceed to install and how you can, a quick introduction to your iPad Studio, okay? So once you download, there are three different types of uh, suits that uh, can meet your needs. For example, we noticed uh, from the first session we did, and you did the actual survey, you notice that most guys are very new to your iPad. So we recommend that you use uh, the non-developer, that's Studio, Studio X, that will be able to like get you from zero to 100 in terms of just uh, automatic simple tasks for yourself or simple tasks for your team, okay? So assuming you've already graphed the knowledge and you have some in-depth data selling on uh, your iPad Studio, you can be able now to proceed and download uh, and uh, I'll show you quickly how you can do that. You can be able to change from uh, Studio X to Studio. Then uh, this one will help you to do complex and large workflows. And also it, it will give you a, a sense on uh, how you can be able to run attended and uh, unattended robots. And lastly, once you are fully abreast, uh, you can download, uh, you can change to Studio Pro. So that, this one is mainly for developers whereby you probably want to do a mobile automation, whereby you want to do probably an API testing, we recommend that you can use that one, okay? So I'll, I'll today is more practical, so just open your iPad Studio. Okay, so, once you have downloaded, this is basically the landing page. I'll quickly walk through the landing page so that you can quickly understand. So it will, the, it, the first thing you'll see is the start, start window. So this is the start window. It will give you the ability to open a, a new project. Assuming you have used it before, you can be able to open a new project or you can use from a, an existing template. Jonathan, we can't, we can't see your screen, the one that you're sharing. Your screen is not shared. Sorry, can you see my screen now? Yes, now I'm able to see. Sorry. So this is the landing page once you open your iPad Pro, okay? So once, uh, basically on the landing page, uh, assuming you have created a previous project, you can quickly be able to access the project that you have used. Assuming uh, you want to create from a template, you have the ability to go from the template. Also, if you if you click on, uh, for example, if you click on tools, if you want to add an extension to either your Chrome or to Firefox, if you just go on uh, tools, then uh, click on Chrome, it will bring up pop-up, you can click okay, 
then it will restart so that to be able to add that uh, that extension. In case I'll not right now. So if you go to settings, so this gives you ability to customize the look and feel. For example, you want to change uh, the language, you want to change uh, the theme color from white, let's say to probably, to probably something dark, also that it will give you that ability. So if you click that one, it will restart the studio. So in my case, mine is restarting and uh, it will come with a new, new theme. So in this case, it has turned from white to black. And also, assuming uh, what I was mentioning, so if you, if you are moving from, uh, let's say, from uh, basics, let's say you, you are just new to RPA and you want to move now to a developer mode. So if you go to license and profile, if you click on it, you'll uh, once you download, this is what uh, you, you'll have on the screen. So we are saying that uh, preferably for new beginners, we recommend that you use Studio X, then you'll be able to move as you grow. So Studio X, is, it will give you that basic understanding on how you can be able to quickly create uh, automations for yourself or for your team that you work with. Then from that, you can move to even advanced whereby you are, you are connecting with the mobile APIs, integrations, et cetera, okay? So remember all of this in terms of uh, an introduction to UiPath Studio can be accessed from academy.uipath.com. Just to give you a deep understanding. So depending on the license that you're using, so in my case, you can see here, I'm using an enterprise license. I'm pretty sure if uh, you're downloading it for the first time, it will, it will log in as a com community, community community license. So what normally happens uh, for community users, if you're stuck on something, we recommend that uh, you, you go through the forums. You can also reach out to the, the different uh, chapter leaders or the MVPs from different countries so that they can be able to support you. But uh, we highly recommend that uh, if you log into community forums and uh, you search or you post your questions, you'll be able to get uh, support from the other, other community users and uh, leaders from the community, okay? If you have a question, please feel free, to, feel free to drop in so that I can be able to respond. So this is just a basic uh, snapshot of, uh, of the platform. Today, I really like us to dive deeper and uh, hopefully that you guys have already developed and you've already downloaded so we can be able now to try and see how what you can do quick quick examples so i'll go back to start and uh, i'll open a new process i'll give it a name so this this tells a uh, rpa training you can follow through if you're fast enough or uh, we'll share the recording and the template uh, once done i'll also share probably this project with you guys so that you can also refresh and refer to it so description, I'll just say training session, training, then I'll create. Okay. Let me change, let me change the theme to, let me change to light so that guys can be able to, to really see my screen as opposed to a dark screen. Let it restart. Okay, so this is better. So what I've done, I've just gone to new project, click process and it created my, my process. So it's open, I'm opening it up. So this is it. So this is, uh, once you have created uh, your process, this is basically the landing page. If you can recall, or uh, if you're able to log in uh, where we are being taken through by each, each meet on the same, so, but I'll quickly be able to take you through. So on the top navigation bar, so this is where, for example, if you want to create a sequence, a flowchart, a state machine, this is where you can be able to do that. You can, once it's done, you can save. Assuming you want to add an additional, let's say probably we will we'll notice, assuming you want to add something that is missing, this is what we call manage package. If you click on it, you can be able to quickly see some of the packages that are available by your iPad. Or uh, you can search if you go to all package and let's say you want to add uh, uh, G Suite. You can search by it and you'll be able to find it there. So in this case, uh, so in my case, if I wanted to add uh, G Suite, this enables me to interact with, uh, with uh, 
Google Sheets, Google Apps, I can just click install and save. So you can quickly search from that. We also have, uh, let this thing finish. We also have uh, on the top navigation, for example, you, you want to record your screen, you want to do screen scrapping. I think that's one, one of the key things that probably we'll do in a different session whereby we go through the web, we, we, we create bots that run through that. This is something that uh, will interact in depth in that session. We also have uh, the publish. So in, in our last session, I was talking about uh, once you have created your, 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 your project and uh, your process here, you want it to, to be able to access it from cloud. You need to click uh, publish. You need to click publish so that you can be able to connect from here to the cloud, okay? So in this case, I've already added, I can see I've already added the G Suite activities, so you can clearly see it's added. So I'll go, I'll click on, I'll click on uh, open main workflow. So this is whereby I'm going to build that entire process that I want to, to for us to interact with. So for starters, we'll add in a sequence. So this enables us to like clearly see what's happening. So I'll just drag and drop, just drag and drop a sequence. I normally prefer to rename it so that you can, can be able to, assuming you want to refer it back and see what it meant, what was happening. So I'll just rename it to, let's say, we'll start with the email. So I'll say email automation. Automation, okay, that's it. So, our first example is to want to log into our emails, to read our emails, and uh, to download attachments from those emails. So what you need to do is, under activities, if I search bar here, if I just search uh, mails. So we have different types of mails. So let me just use this one. Just close them so that you can quickly see. We have the different types of mails. So we have the Outlook mail. If you want to connect to your Outlook, you can use this one. We have the IMAP and the SMTP. If you want to connect to your Gmail, I prefer to use the IMAP to connect to, the, to my Gmail. So in this case, uh, we'll connect to our Gmail account. So I'll just drag and drop this one, IMAP. So you'll notice the first thing once you drop is that uh, it will bring this hazard. Yeah, meaning that uh, there are some details that you need to I don't add on to it. So if you click on properties on the right navigation bar, you'll see that uh, some items are missing. So the first thing is on, uh, if you if I go to hosts uh, is on port. So what, what this one is showing that uh, on my Gmail is the folder that uh, I want to work on is inbox. For example, if we have additional or a different folder, let's say you want to, to get emails from sent outbox, you can just select that one. But uh, on default, it normally picks inbox. You can change this to preferably. The next bit is on port. So if uh, we are using IMAP, the port is normally 993. If you're not sure about the port, what you know, we normally recommend is that you can search through IMAP pop from, uh, from Google. Then uh, the server is normally in, in quotes is IMAP. imap.gmail.com, okay? So the next bit is on which email should it log in. So I've created a dummy email, so it will log into my Gmail account. So I'll retain the password after this. I've just created a dummy. So I'll put in my password. Then, uh, once I drop down, uh, the, I have some options. For example, mark as read only unread messages. So should I, what do I want to do? Should I pull in only unread messages? So in this case, I'll put it as a yes. And uh, the next bit is how many? So in this case, uh, we have top 30. I can say, I just want to pull in the top 10 messages. And uh, once I pull them, where should I store them? So if you go back, where should I store them? And uh, output. So here I'll create a variable. So to create a quick variable, you can click uh, Control K. Okay, then you can give it a name. So I'll say 
means so that's created or alternatively you can go to variables you select you can go to var variables and click variables so in this case it's already there so i'll not add it there but now we have it so that's the first bit so what's happening is that uh, we are logging it to our email and storing all that the top five messages is top five and and uh, storing the top the top uh, 10 mails in my my output is called mails so i'm storing the top 10 emails on on my mails okay it's the same one okay so once i do this what should happen let's say i want it to to display so let's say a message box message So I want it to display on a message box just so that I can be able to quickly pick them. But uh, to do this, I also need to change this from an object to you can need, let me just write, write them down. So I'm, I'm, I want them to, to, I want to display these uh, emails. So I want it. I want us to go through each email in that uh, in my inbox and display them on a mail message box, or I need to write them down. So let me just add for each email in in my inbox. So I'll just pull in a control for each. So the beauty about UiPath is that uh, once you just type it down, it can the narrations are quick and easy to pick. So what do you want to do? We want to go through each email. So that's why we are pulling her for each. Just drag and drop it there. Then I can cut this. So for each email, I'll just change it to email. For each email in my, the output here was mails. This is the variable that was created. For each email in my mails, what should happen? So for each email in my mails, I need to pull a message box. I want it to display a message box. So, but the first condition normally is that uh, this one stores itself as, as an object. So I need to change it to from object to a list, list of messages. So I'll just click under properties, then I'll click on it, browse for types. Then here I'll type in system. dot net dot mail so i have it made here then i need mail message so i've, I've changed it to, to, from uh, an object to a list of messages so that you can be able to show once for example i'm interested in a subject or i'm interested in a date i can quickly be able to see so in my ma message box i just want us to pull the email dot let's say the first one you need the subject okay so the subject okay so this is the first one i'll just stop there so that we can quickly recap so what's happening uh what we have started with uh we have connected with the uh, email address using the imap okay then the next bit uh we went we wanted to go through each email so that uh, we can pull the subject. So you're saying for each email in my inbox, which is now stored under as mails, we want to pull the email or subject. We just want to see what is the subject for each email for the top 10. Remember we, we said the top 10 emails, okay? Which are only unread, okay? So we can quickly run this one so that you can see. It will say it has started. No such host is, is no such host is known. Okay. So you need to go to properties. So quickly check everything here is correct. But uh, what's happening is that uh, 
under my account, we need to give it uh, permission. So I'll go back to a Gmail under security. So two things normally happen. If you go to the Gmail under security, you need to change it to, to enable access. So in this case, probably access needs You need to enable, so I'll go into here, accounts. So I'll go into here under my data and privacy, security, sorry, under security. You have to check uh, two things, number one, that, uh, the sign off is turned off. So in this case, it's off. Then uh, the next bit is that uh, this one, less secure app access. So this one is turned on. It's supposed to be turned off so that you can be able to access. So I'll turn off. Then I'll go back. I'm going to check if everything is correct. It's both of them sending it to Gmail. Two factor is off. And also, less secure app is off. Okay. So if I go back to my project and run it again, I'll see if it is working. I'll search first. Stop. What is? This is correct. That's correct. That's correct. So speak. Shouldn't, should not less secure apps be on Jonathan. Pardon, said you're saying? Invalid credentials failure. Okay. Password and email is correct. Let's try again. So let me just quickly recap. So what I did, uh, the first error, oh, still running. So the first error was uh, simply because on my account, if you go to your settings, what you need to, to ensure is that uh, less secure app is on. I had changed it previously to off. And also to ensure that uh, the two factor is, both of them are also off. Then, uh, then uh, once that one is done, what's happening is that uh, it will be able now to go through my emails and pick the subject and display a message box. So that was what was happening here. So it has started. So this is the first message box. So this is, if I go to my email, I'll be able to see this one. We'll just quickly check. If I click OK, same case, it will go through the second message box that I'm having. Critical success, critical security alert. These are the subjects from those emails that I'm having. Another one is this one. So you can see this one is working perfectly. So I'll just stop it, just quickly reconfirm if, uh, If those are the actual, 
So you can clearly see from my email is I had this one, I had this one, I had transactional device. So this was what was being pulled in. So that one is working correctly. So rather than having a message box, I wanted to write. So rather than having to click every time, so I'll just use another activity. Sorry. Account was closed. So give it a second to open. So I'll use another activity called write. Is restarting again. Okay. Oh, likely it had saved. So remember to save your file so that it does not appear. So I wanted to write it now on my output. So I'll just use right line and I'll drag and drop it there. So same case, I wanted to write now the email, the subject, the form, all those different parameters. So I'll just move this one. And uh, on my text, I'll say email dot, we're interested in the subject. And I'll convert it to string. Okay. So the first bit is going to write for me the email and subject and store it as a string. Then I'll copy it. I'm also interested in, in the from who sent that particular email. So I'll say email dot from. String. I'm also interested uh, when was it sent? So I'll just pull in uh, another one. Email dot. So if you scroll through here, you not see the, this date, but uh, we need to pull it from the header. So I'll just use header. Then uh, in bracket, in double quotes, then I'll put the name date. Then uh, to string. Okay, so I have the subject, I have where it came from, and I also have the date. Okay, so if I click run and uh, look at the output here, it has started. So it's, so it's running. So if you go to my output, you can clearly see that uh, what we have been able to pull in, the first one was on the subject, then uh, where it came from. So this is from, then the date that it was sent. Same case, the second one is from uh, Google and the date it was sent. That one, same case, same case. So we have been able now to pull in all this information. But you need to sort this information. Remember, the end goal is to have this information being written in either our G Suite or being written in our Excel. Okay. So what we need to do is to build a, a database whereby you are going to sort this information. So, like I said, build. So I'll just search with the word build database. And uh, quickly, if I start typing, you'll be able to see this build database. So I'll just pull it in and I'll add it at the beginning. So the reason I've added it at the beginning, not at the tail end, so that once you're able to correlate all of this information, it will just be stored in this database that you're going to have, okay? So under properties, same case, and I'll click properties, the output, we need to say that uh, we need to create a variable that is going to store all of these data, the emails, the form, the dates, all that. So I'll click Control K and call it uh, DB mails. Okay, and click Enter. So I'll also need to create the actual uh, headers. So just move this one. 
I'll edit this one. So if I click edit, so here I'll, I'll give it a name. So I'll saw it, I'll saw it as uh, the first one, I'll call it, uh, I'll start with the date. Date, maximum length, I'll, I'll remove the maximum length from 100, and I'll put negative one so that uh, is not limited, okay? Then I'll edit the next one. So the next one I'll say from, this, these emails are coming from this person. I'll change it from an integer to a string. And also the maximum is still negative one. Then I'll add the subject. Same case a string, and I'll click OK. And I'll click OK. There's one that you need probably to add. For example, if, if you're interested in just a reference number or something, just give us a reference and change this probably to a number, an integer. Click OK. So this is a data table is going to have the date, the from, the subject, as well as the reference. I'll just click OK. So we have our data table. Now we need to change uh, all this information from sitting to a write function just to have it store, to have it assign itself to a data table. So in this case, what I need to add is to create a multiple assign. If I just type multiple, you'll be able, you can quickly be able to see the different controls. So I'll just pull in the multiple. And uh, so from here, I need to, all of this information that I had previously written here, I need to pull them here. So we'll start with the first one, uh, subject, and making reference to how you have named them. So all of them have str at the beginning. So under my subject, I'll create it as now as a variable. So control K, str. The first one was from, I'm not from. Then I just come here from, I put this one to copy, paste. So this one, I can remove it now because I've thought it. The next one is the subject, click add, control K, str subject. Copy the subject text that we had written, paste it here. The next one is uh, the date. So this one you can remove. So the next one is the date. Click add, control K, str date. Copy what we have there. Paste. So this one you can remove. Okay. So all of them I'm I'm now assigning them to different. Now from we are starting with the from. So this is where it's coming from. So this is what's being pulled in. The subject, same case, this is what's being pulled in. And the date, this is what's being pulled in. So just confirm it's starting with the date from subject. So in my case, it's starting with. In my case, it's starting from from subject date. Just rearrange from. Subject date, then we have the reference. So I'll, I'll need to create one that will be able to hold a reference, okay? So the next bit is to, once we have been able to assign, we need to add to our data table. So I'll just click under data table, add, just typing add. So I'll just put add row. So all of this needs to be added to our data table. And uh, in this case, uh, if I click properties, you see it has a hazard. So if I click properties, so the first bit is uh, an array row, data row and a data table. So this data table, I'll link it to the first data table that we had. You can just go back. The first data table was this one, and it was stored as DB mails. 
So this one is still it's going to be similar. I'll just call it emails. Okay. And I also need to pull in all of these items that you have assigned. So let me just open. So I need to pull in all those items that you have assigned. So to start with, I'll use it's called a curly bracket. Okay. Then the first one was uh, from from. Then I'll put a comma. I normally put a space so that I can be able to pick the names as they appear. From office date, the second one, then subject. I'm also interested in. I'm also interested in the reference. I need to create a variable for the reference. So once that's done, you can just remove the space and the dot so that it does not break. You can see the errors disappeared. That's okay, but we need to add one item that's missing. So I'll pull in an assign. There's one variable that we need to add. So this one we had called it control K, create variable, str ref, reference. Then uh, I'll give it now just say reference plus one. So what this one is happening, what this one is doing is that uh, every time it creates, every time we create a row, we need to add an additional row. So this is what you're saying, create plus one row. And uh, for this one, you can see it has an error simply because normally this one is being stored as a string but it's supposed to be stored as an integer. So if I go to my, if I go to my variables, just put this above, and you see reference is being stored as a string. So I need to change it to an integer so that it can work. So that error will disappear. I'll go back to my add row so that I can also add that additional one, so subject reference. It has a space and a dot. It has to be exactly as how I have written them down. So that's the same, so that's correct. Let me just recheck another data we have from subject date reference, from subject date. Does that data table from subject date reference? So I'll just cut this one, paste it there. So what you're trying to pull in is the from, the subject, the date, and the reference. So this is correct. Okay. And uh, once we pull in all of this information from here, we are adding it to a data table that we have created. So this data table is called uh, DB mails, which is similar to what you have built here. Then uh, once that one is done, we have uh, two options. So the first option was uh, to write it to, to an Excel or to, to write it to a G Suite, okay? So we'll start with the first option to write all of this into an, to Excel. So what you need to do is to use write range So in the right range, I'm supposed to go to workbook, right range. Let me just minimize it. So I'll pull in workbook right range. So why should it write? So you need to quickly create, you need to quickly create on desktop, you need to create an Excel. So I'll just open one and create a new one. So if I new blank, let's just
So we have created our, our Excel and you have named it as RPA testing. Okay. So for us to be able to pull in uh, this as a path, what you normally need to do is to click Control, Shift, Control, then right click. It then copy as path. Then if I go back to my page, I'll just in quotes, we'll paste it. So in this case, you can see it has also added some additional quotes. I'll remove the extra quotes. So what we are saying is that uh, we want to write all of this in sheet called sheet one. If it's not there, it's going to create one. And uh, starting from A1, but I'll just move this one. Then uh, the next question is, what are we writing? So we are writing the DB mails, which we have been able to pull in, okay? So that's the first bit. So what's happening, if I can quickly re recap, uh, we have started, uh, we started by connecting to our Gmail so that you can be able to download and view all those emails that you're having. Then uh, we build in our data table whereby we are going to store all those from subject, all those variables there. And uh, lastly, we are going to write it in our Excel. So our Excel is called RPA testing, which uh, is under our desktop. So I'll just quickly ensure it's not open because if it's open, it'll throw in an error, so it's not open. So I'll just run it. So you can see it has started. So you can see it started and it ended within uh, 10 seconds. So I'll just go back to my desktop and see if it wrote anything. Okay, so you can see it was able to write. So my top, my top 10 emails are from uh, UiPath as well as from Google. So these are the emails and uh, this is the date it came in. So this is the email, the date it came in, the subject, sorry, the date it came in and also the reference. In this case, the reference was one, zero. So there was an issue that one. So I'll go back to the studio. We also, for example, uh, assuming we had some attachments in our, our emails and you needed to download them, so what probably you can add is save save attachment. So if you just also, same case, if you just type it, save attachment, save attachment. I'll add it, let me just add it on, on the actual body. So I'm, only, I'm pulling it the first one. So the first bit is to save the attachments. So I want them to be saved. Great, RPA, RPA, let them be saved here. Make a new folder. So I want to save my, I want to save my, the variable, the first variable was called mails. I want to save my mails. So I'm saving my email attachment in a folder called new folder. So this folder I've created it in my project uh, folder. Then uh, once that one is done, it goes through and creates its own uh, database. Then, uh, then it writes to Excel. So if I can quickly show you the folder. So 
So this is the folder RPA testing. So this is a folder, it's blank. But uh, if you have any attachments, it's supposed to save there. So if I can go back to my email automation, I'll change uh, so that I can be able to get attachments. I'll change this one from uh, only unread to even those which have already been read, and I'll increase from 10 to let's say 25, so that I can be able to get attachments, okay? Then that's it, then I'll quickly run. I can see we have some questions, so I'll just, once this one run, I'll just pause and address some of the questions that you have from the team. As it's running, why is it in all? Column, okay, that's one thing. Jonathan, the variable did not increment, that's correct. Sorry, sorry, it's being used. Let me just clean this error. Right range, the process cannot access the file because it's being used. So the reason why you got that error is simply because in this case it's open, you can see it's open. So you need to close it. So there's also another question on uh, this one did not increment and that's correct, you can see it's zero. So let me just close this. Let me first delete everything and close it. Then, okay. So what you need to do is to download the download the attachments. I'll just replay it again as I read through the questions. So do not increment. Does not thus the answer the not implement product club zero. Okay. We check on that one. Let's see if in this case. So this one has taken uh, 21 seconds. So it has taken 21 seconds to read through the emails, to download the attachment, as well as to go and write it in the Excel. So we'll just reconfirm on all scenarios, the first one is on the new folder. So we have some items which have downloaded successfully. Then uh, the next bit I'll need to confirm is the actual Excel on the desktop. RPA testing. Did it right? Yes, in this case, it wrote 25. But uh, the question is, uh, it did not increment. So it did not add uh, zero, one, two, three, did not increment successfully. So the reason why this one did not is simply because on there's an error we made. So when you created this variable, if we go back to the body, when you created this variable, ref, we did not, and a variable, we did not change it to default. So for, for example, in this case, this is it. So the default is blank. So that's why it's zero. So I'll change this, let's say, to, to one and see if it will work. And play it. It will, it will stop. Let me just stop it because it's still open here. Make sure to close the workbook every time you want to run it. So I'll just close. Let me say, close it and I run it. If you have additional questions, remember to leave it on the chat so that you can review them together. So this one has run successfully, same case, 21 seconds. So we'll start uh, with this one and see if it's something, if it changed. Same case, this one is not incrementing, still saying one. I suppose because build data activity comes first in the workflow. Build data activity comes first in the workflow. Instead, you're saying something that uh, 
it's not incrementing because we are building we are building the data fast. You can unmute so that. Uh, So the reason why we are building this data first, simply because if you build it first, once you have already created the database, it will not work simply because the database will not be knowing where it's supposed to put all that uh, information. So that's why I added it on the first step. Okay, but uh, that's something probably I can also recheck and see why it's not incrementing, and probably I can get back to you. Kit. Okay, so that's on. Uh, Saving attachment. Let's just confirm the attachments are saved before you can. So the attachments did save successfully, but the only issue was on uh, incremental. So that's something I can quickly check and get back to you. So the next bit is uh, assuming you have, you, you are not using uh, Excel, probably your company is using uh, G Suite. So you like it to write to your G Suite account, especially to your Sheets account. So what we'll do, I'll, I'll create, I'll create Sheets, Google Sheets, we'll create on the Google Sheets. So in case I'll, I'll call it, uh, same case, I'll call it RPA testing. Then I'll save. Then uh, for us to be able to achieve the same, we need to do a couple of uh, adjustments. So the first one is we need to log into what you call console.cloud.google.com. So what you're trying to do is that uh, we want to create uh, permissions, you want to create API keys so that you can be able to achieve the same. So you'll use console.cloud.google.com. So if I can go back to my, if I can go back to here, what you need to add is G Suite. G Suite, application scope. So this one opens G Suite. So assuming you do not, you are not able to see G Suite, remember to go to manage package, all packages, then, uh, Type it in there, G Suite. Then you install and save so that you can, it can be able to appear in your end. So I'll just pull in uh, G Suite, and I'll let me just temporarily disable the right activity to 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 the Excel so that you can work with G Suite. Okay. So once you pull in a uh, G Suite application scope, and you go to properties. There are some key things that you need to change. For example, the first thing is on uh, authentic authentication type. You need to change it to service account key. Okay. And uh, the next bit uh, is on the key path. So this is some of the information that you need to pull in from console. So I'll just go back to my console. So this is my console. So if you click on the navigation menu, then go to API and services, click credentials. So we need to create a new credential that will be able to access uh, RPA testing on our behalf. So I'll just click create credential. What you are interested in is a service account. So I'll click uh, service account. Give it a name. So in this case, I'll, I'll call it uh, RPA, RPA testing. Testing. Create and continue. So the next option is ground access. So this one, I'll just click continue. Then done. So if you scroll down, you'll see all those different uh, service accounts that uh, you have. So in this case, uh, we have created RPA testing. This is 
I'll just click into it. Then I'll go to keys. Remember, we need we need to give uh, the actual keys so that we can be able to proceed. So I'll go to add key keys. Then you click add key. Then you can click create new key. So we recommend that you use a JSON. So I'll just proceed with that one. So the same as downloaded. So what you can do is that uh, I recommend you move it from the downloads, probably a project folder. In this case, is RPA testing. Then paste it there. I'll rename it for quick of access. I'll call it RPA testing. RPA testing. I'll call it that. Yeah, call it RPA testing. So that's one. Go back to, to our console. And the credentials. This, this service account that we created, I'll ask you to copy it down. We'll use it uh, on our on a, on a sheets. So if you go to share access, just share that access to that one. Edit access so that you can be able to access that one. Okay. So back to our credential, there is one bit we need to do. So same case, look, go to navigation. Then under APIs and service, in this case, click library. What you need to do, assuming uh, you have not uh, given You have not been able to connect your Sheets API with your RPA. What you need to do is to enable so that they can be able to interact and read together. So if I go there and they click API. So if yours is disabled, click enable so that it, it can be connected. So you can see in my case is already enabled. So there's nothing I need to do here. But in the event yours is not enabled, just remember to click enable here. Okay, so I can go back now to my Automation, what you need to do is to pull in uh, sheets. It will right range. So I'll just drag it there. Spreadsheet ID, same case in this one, if I go quickly go back, the spreadsheet ID you can pick uh, from the first, just after the forward slash, this is the spreadsheet ID, quickly copy it. Then in double quotes, you place it there. Then sheet name, sheet one, so that one is still the same, starting from, I remove this one, A1 has headers, so it will pick uh, the headers that you had created there. Then uh, data table, same case what we are using, DB mails. So that's the data table that I wanted to write. Okay, so this, if I go back to suit, I need to configure scope. So what I want is for it to include the spreadsheet. So I'll just click spreadsheet, okay. Then uh, on my properties, there is the keeper that uh, we have downloaded. Okay. So if I, if I can copy it as path, let me quickly go. Quickly go. So this is the key path. Same case for you to copy it. Remember to shift, control, right click, copy as path. Then you can paste it there in double quotes, paste. Remove the error. In this case, the error is there's an additional quote. Password, they do not need it. We just delete it. That's it, supposed to be.
must provide a starting a starting cell. Starting cell in this case it will be A1. Okay, so there's no error. So that one has picked. So just quick recap. So what you have done, you have pulled in the from sheets, we are pulling the application scope so that it can be able to open. Then uh, we went ahead and customized our console so that it can give it access. So we went to console.cloud.google.com uh, whereby we added uh, the permissions, we created a service account on the same. Then we are able to download the key. So from that key, we saved it to our project file and we are pulling that information we're pulling that uh, project key into here under our key path. Okay. Then uh, that's that. Once that one is done, we configured so that because we're interested to pull in the spreadsheet, we included the spreadsheet. Then uh, we, we linked uh, with the spreadsheet ID. So, sorry, the spreadsheet ID, we're able to pick uh, here. From the first slash up to here, we are able to pick this as our spreadsheet ID. Okay, and that's it. So, what you now need to do is to run and see if it's going to write it in sheet one. And if there's any error, we can address. Remember, we also we gave it permission. We gave uh, the service account that you created. We gave it permission to read and write in our spreadsheet. I'll quickly run it. Let's address some of the questions to uh, the columns. Google spreadsheet, but you did not create headers in Google spreadsheet. So yes, I did not create the headers, but it's, it's going to pick from uh, what I had created on the data table. So let me just show you. Include headers, you can see, include headers selected. So let it run, then uh, you can be able to quickly see. So as it run, remember it's, it's going through the emails, creating an actual uh, data table, then uh, it's downloading the attachment. We disable the activity to, to write in Excel, then uh, from that, it goes and write in uh, in our spreadsheet. Okay, so that one takes uh, for the twenty five. It has taken uh, fifty seconds. So let's just see. So same case. This was an issue. So, but you can clearly see that uh, it did. So just to answer the question that was asked, so it 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 picked the the header from the data table. So this is the header, and these are the different items. And it also write, it wrote all those rows. In this case, there were 25 plus the header, now this is 26. On the key item, I notice is still on the reference. Not sure it's not picking. Not sure it's not picking the reference. Send reference and data table. Probably that's the reason. Jonathan, can you try it both on Excel and G sheet at a go? Kedrick. So, yes, it can. Automation. So, here it is. It was writing, but I had disabled. So, what I can do, I can just enable, enable activity so that. Uh, it will write both in my Excel as well as in my in my spreadsheet. So I'll just delete that one, save and close. So, Kedrick to answer a question. So I'll rerun it. I'll try to edit the last bit on the assign so that I can see if it will work. So the goal is to download the attachment write in Excel and also write in a uh, spreadsheet. Oh, I didn't, I forgot to delete, but it will re rewrite if the data is still existing. 
Is there questions from, from the team? As it runs. Remember to always ensure that uh, when you're running from here, that uh, the Excel is closed. So that it does not bring an error or alternatively there is another option if you want to have it open this is the excel application scope which you can use okay so once you have included even for it to write to to the excel it's now taking uh, 53 seconds so i need to go back to the excel at the testing So this one didn't work. I'm not sure. So as you can see, it wrote here. As well as here. But this one did not change simply because it, it was just overwriting the same. But assuming it was blank, it would have been able to write on the same. So one of the key things I need to recheck is why is it not pulling this one? And so that. Maybe this is not into me because of how you have described it in the variable. Let's quickly check. So on the variable default, I've defaulted to zero. Because okay, so what I wanted it is if its starting point is let's say zero, it's supposed to be zero plus one. So the first one is one. The second bit is one plus one, then it will be two. Let me know if that's the issue. Said. What if you remove the default? So default is where it's starting from. So that's why I was saying one. That's the reason. Remove the default. If I remove the default, in this case, I've removed the default. Let's run it. Let's just make sure it's closed. As it runs, let me show you the video this one so that you can do it here as you see. It's saying one. You see the issue? It's saying, still saying one as it writes. So probably that's something I need to, to recheck again and I can get back to you and the team on the same. Yeah. So guys, uh, I'll, 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 I'll open up the forum for questions, clarifications, and uh, we, we've just touched based on Excel. There's so much you can do in Excel. For example, if you're interested in doing the actual formulas, the VLOOKUPs, all those daily, daily stuff that you normally work on. So for example, uh, let's say Kedrick, in, you're using Excel, so whereby you run through with formulas, the, the pivot world, you want to create all of those. So there's a lot you can do in terms of Excel automations. So I'll still refer the team to academy.uipath.com for you to get up to speed on uh, Excel automations and what you can be able to do. And also if, if there are some aspects you have not understood, especially on uh, the studio. I'll, I'll, I'll reshare, probably I'll just save and, and, and reshare this entire file with you guys so that you can go back and 
review it and see the same as well as the recordings and the and the presentation so that you can be able to work with it then uh, from that probably we can get uh, or I'll, I'll ask it uh, you can see your first time but i can quickly ask so what should be the next session are we confident that uh, we have a rough understanding on uepa studio before we can proceed to orchestrator probably i'll throw it to the to, to the guys on call so can you say we now have a rough understanding on getting started on UiPath Studio? Before we, we, we now move to probably a different topic on, uh, on let's say, scrapping, screen scrapping on, on web. Do you have a basic understanding on, on Studio? Anyone on call who can go first? Elijah, Kedrick, Mauricia, Tom. You have done an in-depth. That's is now a matter of yes. There's a lot of videos that have been done from other guys in other countries. You can also, if you're interested, let's say we look up in your iPad, you can be able to just go through what has been done by them and uh, see from and learn from them yes i have an understanding of its capability nice nice so guys i'll still urge you to to go through this video as well as other videos that have been done also there if you are interested let's say in a particular topic that either we have not covered let's say if you're interested in in addition all of it writing in, in g suit you wanted to send an email there's all those videos, I believe they, they have been done by our peers from other countries and from other communities. Whereby if you can you can just look into it, try and pick some items. If you are stuck, you can reach out to guys either in here in Kenya or in any, any part of the community groups. They'll be able to assist you. So I think I've come to the end. Yes, that's that's correct. More practice. I think I've come to the end. Of the presentation so i'll just uh, stop sharing then i'll ask uh,